Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, here to talk to you about Linda Sarsour, a darling of the American left and a leader of the Women's March on Washington, right after the inauguration of Donald Trump as President of the United States. Linda Sarsour has become the center of a new controversy as she is set to give the commencement speech at the City University of New York, or CUNY, on June 1st. There is a protest set for May 25th at 42nd Street in New York, led by my colleague Pamela Geller, and featuring a tremendous array of great speakers, including Noni Darwish Milo, David Wood of Act 17 Apologetics, one of the most brilliant men on the planet today, and many others. Dove Heekind, the assemblyman from New York City, who has spearheaded the protests against Sarsour, will also be speaking there. And so I exhort you, if you're in the area, to go to that protest. And the reasons why are these. Linda Sarsour is just the opposite of the kind of person who ought to be giving a commencement speech. Of course, nowadays, the universities and colleges in the United States are almost universally controlled by the far left, and she is a darling of the far left. But one wonders whether leftist feminists have really considered what she stands for. She has openly defended Sharia. She has claimed falsely that Sharia is only a matter of not eating pork and not drinking wine. And she has said that Sharia is misunderstood. She is, of course, a wearer of the hijab, the headscarf that Muslim women are mandated to wear by Quran chapter 24, verse 31, and various hadiths in which Muhammad says that women should cover everything except their face and hands. Now, you've got to wonder, Linda Sarsour says, this is my hijab, my choice. Fair enough. But consider this. There are many, many women in the United States and elsewhere who do not have that kind of choice, who because of the sense that it's a divine command are forced to wear the hijab and sometimes even threatened for not wearing the hijab. In Mississauga, Ontario, about 10 years ago, there was a young woman named Aksa Parvez who was strangled to death by her father and brother for refusing to wear the hijab. She was actually strangled with the hijab that she refused to wear. Who is standing for her? Are American feminists willing to say, yes, it's your choice even if you dare, don't want to wear the hijab, even if you are a woman who is being brutalized and victimized for not wearing the hijab? Feminists have said nothing about such women. They do not stand in solidarity with them. There has been no American feminist or European feminist who has spoken out about the oppression of women being forced to wear the hijab and brutalized for not doing so. Linda Sarsour indirectly endorses that kind of coercion when she appears in hijab and says that it's her choice and makes no mention of those who are forced and those who are coerced and those who are brutalized. What's more, Sharia is a complex of laws. It is a system that has a law for pretty much anything you can imagine doing as a human being. One of the things that Sharia says is that a woman cannot go out of the house without her husband's permission or the permission of a male guardian if she has no husband. Now, Linda Sarsour herself is married. I do not know her husband, and I imagine that he is fully in line with what she is doing. But just imagine, a thought experiment for a moment, just imagine if Linda Sarsour's husband were to say, I don't want you giving the commencement address at Cooney. You are not allowed to leave the house today, June 1st. You are not allowed to go to give the commencement speech at Cooney. As a Sharia adherent Muslim, by her own admission, Linda Sarsour would have to stay home. And in doing so, she would validate the institutionalized misogyny that Sharia represents. She would be giving her imprimatur to the idea that women are lesser human beings than men and have to be controlled in this way. She has already indirectly given her imprimatur to elements of Sharia that are inherently misogynistic. The Quran sanctions wife beating. If Linda, for example, were to say, I am going to go to the Kuni speech and give it anyway, and you are not going to stop me. What if he beat her? What if her husband said, well then, I'm going to beat you and make sure that you understand that you are not allowed to go to the Kuni speech? What could Linda say? It's Sharia. It's the Quran. And that kind of misogyny is something that Western feminists are endorsing, 
by elevating Linda Sarsour to the lofty status that she enjoys today. The contradictions are absolute, and everyone's ignoring them. Linda Sarsour should not speak because she is a visible, articulate, and vocal exponent of the oppression that Sharia represents for women. Now I know, on colleges and university campuses today, it is absolutely forbidden to speak a word critical of Islam, critical of jihad terror, critical of Sharia oppression of women, or of any other group. But if universities were to have any integrity, and if CUNY were to have any integrity now, they would open up their campus for debate about the oppression that Sharia institutionalizes. And rather than having Sarsour being celebrated by being the commencement speaker, they could have her come and debate. I'll be happy to come debate her. I'm sure that many others would as well. And that we could discuss the elements of Sharia that are oppressive to women and discuss what can be done about them and what should be done about them. That would be a very, very fruitful exercise. But I am certain, as I am certain that I am breathing air right now, that that will not happen and that Linda Sarsour will instead be lauded and celebrated with no attention given to the oppression that she represents. This is the astonishing cognitive dissonance of the American left today, and of American feminists in particular. And this is the shocking contradiction that they are allowing and the evil that they are enabling by having Linda Sarsour speak. Be at the protests on May 25th and stop Linda Sarsour from being hailed and celebrated in this way that she so richly does not deserve. I'm Robert Spencer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.